Hello, welcome to the Monday, July 17th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. And I'll actually be back in Europe. Last week, October, I'll be teaching intrusion detection in depth in Berlin. For details and other classes I teach, just check the show notes at the bottom of the page. You'll find the list. But let's take a look at diaries. On Friday, Brad wrote about Nemecut AES and the mail spam that actually distributes it. Nemecut AES is a ransomware. Luckily, there is a decryptor available for it. So if you are being hit by this, there is a chance for you to recover your files. It typically arrives as usual with a downloader that's a zipped JavaScript file and claims to be a UPS delivery notice. This particular wave is going on for a couple of weeks now and Pratt as usual does have indicators of compromise, traffic captures and some history about this particular ransomware family. And now one thing we always like is if users send us in any malicious documents or so that they received. Didier looked at a recent one. It was an Excel spreadsheet and it contained a Windows shortcut, a link file. Now Didier used Ollie Dump here in order to analyze this particular file. The link file, and I think I mentioned this before, does then download additional malware to the system. It accomplishes this via PowerShell and well, uh, the URL here is sort of split up in order to obfuscate it somewhat. Sadly, not a lot of other metadata in this link file. That's what DDA was hoping for here. In particular, things like a MAC address or so can be included, but the metadata looks all artificial, like even the timestamps or so don't really make sense. And on Friday, 751 domains registered with Registrar Gandhi uh, were compromised and pointed to a malicious website. Now, these kind of compromises are somewhat common and what typically happens is that the particular user's credentials for the registrar get compromised. However, in this case, this wasn't uh, really what happened. What happened was that actually Gandhi's infrastructure or better said uh, one of their providers that sort of helps them interface with various registrars was compromised and uh, that compromise was then used to make these modifications. The attacker did change the name server settings for affected domains. They spanned multiple top level domains so it wasn't really limited to one specific top level domains and for a little bit less than two hours, they essentially were able to make changes. Now, Gandhi at that point then discovered the problem and was able to stop additional modifications. They also went ahead and undid any changes made by the attacker. Gandhi has a pretty good uh, blog up with some details about this particular compromise, but just shows again that it's important that you monitor your DNS zone so it doesn't get modified without authorization. Users who went to these malicious websites during the compromise were exposed to the RIC exploit kit, also an old favorite, and it was used to install additional malware on systems. And then we got another vulnerable device. In this case, the iSmart Home Alarm System. Now, I stopped reporting about a lot of these IoT vulnerabilities because they're all very similar. Nothing really all that different here. In this particular case, of course, an alarm system being involved may make this a bit more important. Also, kind of odd here that there was no confirmation or reply from the vendor, even though the cert was involved initially this was reported end of January and then again via cert mid-April. Now among the reported vulnerabilities here the one that concerns me the most is actually not a vulnerability in the device itself but uh, while investigating 
He found an exposed JIRA ticketing system at iSmart that did expose customer data. That's of course very bad because now any configurations are such that customers are submitting as part of bug reports or support requests are exposed. Of course, the device does have denial of service vulnerabilities, but that I think kind of goes with the territory if you have an internet connected alarm system. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.